you ever feel like mindset work and all of the books and all of the affirmations and all of the personal development workshops and everything you try to do to amp yourself up, to motivate yourself, to try to get yourself to stop procrastinating, all of the stuff, all of the personal development stuff, do you feel like it's just not working for you. Today I want to offer you a bit of a different perspective. I'm getting ready for a workshop that I'm holding on Friday where we're going to set our new goals for the new year. We are going to reflect on what's happened in 2023 and also set tangible goals for 2024. And a big part of every time I do one of these workshops is I talk about mindset and the frame of mind we should be in when we're setting these goals, when we're focusing on our business, when we're deciding where we want to go in our businesses. Now, I talk about mindset, but I'm somebody who has consumed a ton of personal development material. And if you're anything like me, sometimes it just feels like you're on a hamster wheel of constantly consuming all of the books and the podcasts and the speakers and all of the stuff. And yet you still feel stuck or you're not taking action or there's something that's there that is still limiting you, that's still stopping you. That's still the reason why you have not taken action toward those goals. And I want to hone in on that and see, okay, why? Why do you feel like that? What's stopping you and how can we actually get past that? And if you're live here, let me know if you can hear me because I have my phone set up a little bit different today and I want to make sure that the volume is okay. So personal development and mindset work will always have its limitations. It won't always, it won't reach it won't give you the ROI on everything you're investing into it simply because if you don't have the right foundation first, the mindset piece doesn't come. Uh, so it's loud and clear. Thank you. You need to have the right foundation. You have to have the right belief system underneath all of that. If anything you hear or try to adopt is going to take root in your mind, you have to have a certain perspective and a belief system. That's why I think changing your perspective on things is so much more powerful than affirmations or getting motivated. Motivation is fleeting. Motivation changes day to day. And we're left with really just the self-discipline aspect of it. And that really comes down to perspective and how you view the world, right? So you're always going to default back to how you view the world or your perspective. You're always going to default back to your deepest held belief about who you are and what you're capable of. Regardless of the skills you learn, the mindset shifts you try to adopt, there's a belief there about who you are and what you're capable of that you will fall back down to. So you have to change that. And after mentoring hundreds of freelancers, um, the one thing that I have really realized is that I'm very accustomed now with the type of people that I attract and who joins my programs and who I speak to. And it's a specific type of person. The freelance community, specifically freelance writers, they struggle with self-doubt, imposter syndrome, and they're very stuck in their head. I noticed that those are really three big attributes that writers, freelancers specifically share. It's the self-doubt, it's the imposter syndrome, and just living life very much stuck in their heads. And I relate to that struggle immensely. It's something that I have dealt with my entire life. I struggle immensely with that, right? However, I have to tell you, I am the strongest that I've been mentally just in this past couple months for one reason. I have started to believe what God says about me versus what I say about me, whatever the voices in my head are saying, I've adopted God's view of me and what he says in scripture about who I am versus that voice of self-doubt, that critical voice, the comparison, what society tells me I should be or where I should be or who I should be or how I should be. The fact that I'm now believing something else about who I am allows me to operate with so much more freedom, so much more mental clarity. And that's why I want to share this with you today, right? So as I'm preparing this workshop um, and 
I'm excited because I've I posted this on my story earlier, but I have found my scripture. I think this happens to everybody who just starts reading the Bible for the first time, but I have found that one scripture where I'm like, that's like my life scripture right there. And it's in the book of Timothy. And it says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self discipline. Okay, so here's what I take from that and why I'm so fired up about that and why I think this is the best thing I can share with you when you're setting these goals for 2024. So God has given you a gift, but it's up to you to act on it and follow through with it. I think deep down, if you're listening to this, you know you're here for a purpose or reason. You know that you're pursuing higher learning and the information that you're consuming for a reason, you know God gave you those gifts, that interest. You might think like, oh yeah, everybody wants to do this. No, not everyone wants to do this. You have this desire to become self-employed and gain that freedom you're seeking. You have that desire. God has planted it in your heart for a very specific purpose because he wants to see it come true. But we have to then, you know, pick up the slack, I guess. (laughs) That's probably not the right word. We have to pick up where he left off and do the work and take the initiative with what he's given us. So that's what it means by like fan the flames. Like, yeah, okay, so you have this desire, you have this motivation, but now you have to get up and work and get going, right? The second thing is that fear of rejection, right? We're out here, we're pitching, we're trying to get clients, we're trying to build a website and market ourselves. This fear of rejection, the self-doubt and that procrastination, that stuckness, the lack of belief in yourself and your ability to actually do this and make the income you want to make and get the freedom you crave and actually make this whole freelance thing work, that lack of belief in that, that's not from God. That's not. So why does that matter? Well, if it's not from God, then you have the ability to reject it. I think there's something so powerful about being able to detach from certain things, certain outcomes, whatever it is. I'll give you a prime example. In marketing, in sales, when you can actually look at what's happening through the perspective of this is a numbers game and that there's a guaranteed percentage of people that are not going to be interested and there's a guaranteed percentage of people that are going to be interested you can remove the emotion and you can detach from it okay so there's something really beautiful about being able to mentally find ways to detach from the outcome and if it's that's my marketing example right like oh you know i sent this email and it got this percentage of click-through rate like that's the data okay i have the data and i can move forward and make informed decisions moving forward that's a level of detachment i'm not sitting there saying oh my god the email bombed i'm defective right so When you're saying to yourself, well, I know that I have imposter syndrome, I know that I have fear of rejection, I know that I tend to procrastinate, and I know that I have so riddled with self-doubt, instead of you saying, oh, that's my identity, detach from it and say, whatever that is, that's not me, and I don't have to accept that, okay? You don't have to accept that that's who you are, this timid, fearful, imposter syndrome overly analytical person you can be aware self-aware that you possess those attributes at times but you don't have to accept it there's something freeing about that do you agree with me (laughs) so this is according to scripture the truth of what we really are what we're what what spirit we've been given it's power love and self-discipline right so For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So what does that mean? Number one is power, okay? So we're safe. We have a higher power behind us. We don't need to rely on ourselves. There's a higher power that's supporting us in this endeavor. When you can start operating from that mindset instead of like, I got to figure it out. My biggest problem is self-reliance and feeling as though I need to do it all myself. And it is backbreaking and it is so tiring and it is so exhausting. And I, I refuse to live my life like that anymore. Whatever childhood you had, whatever experiences you might have had, 
that have given you this spirit of utter self-reliance and not feeling that you can trust anyone. And, and uh, you know, it's really empowering on the one hand to say like, hey, no one's coming to save me. I got to get up and do this and get this done. Yes, that's empowering. But you can feel when it starts to veer into an unhealthy self-reliance and a, you know, a guardedness and like a constant fear and over responsibility and taking ownership for every situation, we have to find a way mentally to go through this freelance journey, this entrepreneurial journey, and feel that we are being supported and guided by someone other than ourselves because we are individuals, we are sole (laughs) proprietors when we file taxes, we are solopreneurs right we are on our own in so many ways so in order to get through that we need to feel as though there is a higher power that is taking care of things and that you're being led and that you're being guided so that's number one that's power now number two is uh, and i want to give you examples tangible examples of what power is right so power is not stressing about how you're going to pay your bills not stressing about how you're going to succeed and just trusting the outcome And when you do start to relax into that, you'll see you will be able to work more efficiently and find solutions from that calm state of mind. Feeling empowered to take chances in our careers and go where we're being called instead of playing it safe, right? So whether that's you right now wondering if you really should be making the leap into full-time freelancing and leaving maybe a stable job, or maybe if you're like me, you're about to do some type of pivot because for me um, I want to make big changes in my business this year but I have found financial success in my niche which is technology and pivoting away from what I know works for me what I know pays my bills is really scary so if I'm able to operate from an empowered state of like hey I can take chances and really go uh, where God is leading me and trust that it's going to work out even though I don't see necessarily how it'll work out that's a feeling of power and also In terms of power, everyone on this call, freelancers, right? Stepping into your role as a business partner, an expert, and a consultant versus a timid, oh, I'm just a freelancer. I think that's the biggest difference between the freelancers who are making a full-time income, who are really feeling control of their business and their, their, their monthly income, is that they are stepping into this role of a business owner and consultant versus a freelancer an order taker that's really owning it and owning your power now let's talk about love right being a service provider is a really special role and a really special career to pursue i don't even talk about this enough and i don't know why and i've been wanting to talk about it but when i think of my hairstylist my personal brand photographer the accountants i've worked with people I have created genuine friendships with, these are not nameless, faceless corporations. You are not a nameless company that somebody swipes their credit card on. You are a person. You have the ability to make such genuine connections in this industry and really have an impact on people's business and free up their workload and have that mindset. Don't let the hustle and the responsibilities and all the heaviness that comes with having so much responsibility as a freelancer, don't let it make you forget that you're having an actual impact on a one-to-one personal level. That's really key. And then finally, self-discipline, right? So we have power, love, and self-discipline. It's interesting because some translations in the Bible replace self-discipline with the term sound mind. And the ancient Greek word here um, denotes calm, self-controlled mind in contrast to panic and confusion that comes in fearful situations. So it's really interesting because one translation says self-discipline, which is so, so important for what we do. And then the other translation says sound mind, which to me just means calmness serenity standing in your power not freaking out and not letting fear stop you from actually fulfilling this purpose so fear fear of rejection 
all the mindset stuff, all the trash, all of the critical voices in your head. We need to be on you know, the defense. We need to be ready to attack all of those thoughts that are coming our way that are telling us we can't do this. And that's why I wanted to share this with you is that we need to stay. I think one of the biggest reasons why I have stayed struggling and not progressed and really like, you you know what I'm talking about. It's like you have a problem, you know what the problem is, you know you want to find a solution to the problem, but for some reason you're stuck. That's kind of what I've dealt with in terms of mindset and and really um, taking control of my mental health. And I think the biggest mistake I've made or the biggest, I guess, um, lesson that I missed out on is that I need to be actively fighting every critical thought, every negative voice, all that stuff that comes in. I have to be fighting that. And as someone who has tried to fight those thoughts with just everything under the sun, the therapy, the affirmations, all of the self-help stuff, I have not found anything to be as effective as what I have shared with you, right? So all of this is in preparation for a workshop that I'm holding this Friday. It is a goal-setting workshop. And of course, I want to go a little bit into this mindset stuff because it's so important as a foundation. But then we're going to get into the nitty gritty and actually understand how to set tangible goals for our freelance business. We're going to set our focus, meaning our business priorities, and then we're going to go into the tangible, which is our metrics. What I like to do in my freelance business and what has always worked for me is to set metrics and then work backwards. So when you set an income goal, you need to understand what steps you're going to take in order to get to that business goal. We need to know what deliverables we're going to offer. And then we need to know the business development tasks, how we're gonna generate the business to actually complete those deliverables and make the income goal, right? So. If you've been confused about why goal setting hasn't worked for you in the past, if you don't even know where to start because you Google goal setting and just so much comes up, this is a proven way to actually set your income goal and work backwards and set those milestones so that you stay accountable and consistent. If you are able to set a realistic goal, understand where you are today in terms of your strengths and weaknesses, and then you're able to break that goal into tangible steps, you will stay consistent and you will have that accountability. I'm going to show you how I use project management software to set those goals. But that is like, I would say the number one component of success in freelancing is being able to set goals, achieve them, follow through on them. If you don't set them, you can't meet them. You need a direction. I just sent out an email today to all of the workshop attendees and it's one of my favorite quotes and it's, as you're climbing the ladder of success, make sure it's leaning up against the right wall, right? We wanna make sure that we're setting ourselves up to go in the right direction or else we're just climbing up the wall where we're, we're striving, we're aiming to achieve something, yet if it's not pointed in the right direction, we're not gonna be any closer to what brings us joy and what we want out of our careers. I want to go through the comments and see. And if you're interested in joining that workshop, it's kind of something different I'm doing. This workshop is usually something available to students within 30 days to paid my program. However, if you purchase the freelance template playbook, you will have access to this workshop. So it'll be really cool for me to kind of open up this workshop to not only 30 days to paid students and members of the paid writers community, but also anyone who has purchased anything from me, because I want to show that appreciation to anyone who has bought one of my products. Um, Talib said, did I understand right? You will help us how we can take action, which we cannot help us find that mindset. Yes, in the workshop, I will. (laughs) Simply Alexandra said, this is true groundwork, the foundation of everything. Amazing. So good seeing you guys. Matt, I cannot wait to see you at the workshop as well. So if you have not bought the Freelance Template Playbook, it's a 
digital document of 35 plus templates that will teach you how to cold pitch, how to get in front of your ideal freelance writing clients so that you're never staring at a blank screen. You always know what to say. You have creative ways to follow up with clients. That's something freelancers struggle with is like, Christine, I got someone to answer, but they've fallen off and I don't know how to deal with it. So this is really going to help you know what to say so you can complete these business development tasks in your freelance business so much more easily because you're just not staring at a blank screen. You don't have to come up with things from scratch. And the cool thing is that once you purchase the freelance template playbook, you will have the ability, excuse me, to register for the workshop on Friday where we're going to go through goal setting. It's going to be an interactive session. I can be answering your questions and it's a good um, low barrier to entry way for you to join the paid writers community and the stuff that I'm offering in there and kind of get a sense for my teaching style and just start 2024 off on the right foot. This is a big year. I can really feel it in my heart that this is going to be a year where things start to really fall into place. I was thinking this the other day and I wanted to write a newsletter, but I have like 10,000 ideas for newsletters and it's just a matter of how fast I can get the idea into Asana and then write the newsletter and schedule it out. But something I've really been thinking about is like, I don't want you to give up freelancing and this journey because... I am, I'm going to say around four years into this now, and I'm just starting to feel comfortable. I'm just starting to feel like I have this figured out. So for the first, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't take everyone that long to feel confident and comfortable, but it did for me. And if you're anything like me, I want you to know that feeling as though you don't know what you're doing and like why does this feel so stressful and why does it just never feel easy all of these feelings i they're just starting to go away now four years into this so i don't want you to give up before you get to the actual mental freedom because first time freedom comes first like it's the stages first you're like realizing oh my god i just got someone to pay me and it didn't come from a w-2 paycheck which is insane like for me the first time i actually got paid and direct deposit hit my account and i knew that it didn't come from me working for a company it was mind-blowing and once i got a taste of that it was like oh wow i'm actually paying my bills my rent with freelance income by writing for a living working from home oh my god this is so cool um, and then it kind of just starts to feel like, okay, how long can I keep this going? Right. There's like the feast and the famine, like, oh, I just lost a client. A lot, a client just dropped me. Oh, I can't stand working for this client. Uh, should I drop them or am I not going to be able to afford this if I do that? So then it kind of gets rocky in that sense. And then I have to say only about four years in, and even though I've made consistent income every year, made a livable income, never had to, you know, resort to a nine to five, it only gets easy when you, you know, have put in the reps, you've worked for enough clients and you've done the mindset work to feel comfortable with the unknown. So that's why I talk so much about mindset. I urge you to join this workshop this Friday. You will be able to join the workshop if you download the freelance template playbook. This is not something I typically do. This is something that's typically only open to the paid writers community within my program, 30 Days to Paid, where I teach freelancers how to land high paying freelance clients via cold pitching on LinkedIn. So if you have been curious about that program and you just wanna kind of dip your toe in the water, join that workshop, have your goals set up for 2024. I will show you behind the scenes of my own goals, the pivots that I plan to make in my freelance business this year. And I think it's sometimes just really good to hear from other entrepreneurs who are doing this and say, oh, okay, this is making the wheels turn. I'm getting good ideas about this and how I can do this and what's possible for me, okay? So I would love to see you guys there. Matt said, I'm hoping 2024 will be the year I finally get this off the ground. Yes, I feel like 
I just feel it in the air that this is going to be the year that things fall into place for all of us as a freelance community. So thank you for joining me. Go to paidcopywriter.com and check out the freelance template playbook if you are interested in joining the workshop because you will be able to join that workshop on Friday just for owning the freelance template playbook. And I cannot wait to spend that time with you and get psyched for the upcoming new year, set tangible goals, and just get in that mindset. Okay, talk to you guys later.